A lot of hunting strategies are based around a food resource, and there's a good reason why. Deer consume a lot of food daily. Depending on the researchers, the northern guys say about 5% a day. Mississippi State has published about 3% a day, which makes sense. Southern deer, you know, not probably not eating as much as a northern deer. But either way, that's a lot of weight. Now, that's dry weight. They take samples, take it in the lab, and basically cook it to get all the moisture out. Talking about wet weight, you think about pulling leaves in the summer for a forage sample or something. That's about 6 or 8% of a deer's body weight a day. So 100 pound doe, 100 pound deer on an average, that's eight pounds a day if you would just pick it in the field. That may not seem like much, eight pounds, but I mean, I've picked leaves before to get a forage sample to test the quality and just get enough leaves to fill a little pint bag is a lot of picking. You think about eight pounds, gosh, that's probably more than a five gallon bucket full of leaves. That's a lot, and deer walking around picking that, selecting the most palatable and quality forage leaf by leaf or acorns, well it's obvious deer spend a lot of time feeding daily. Knowing how much a deer needs to consume daily, it makes sense to base hunting strategies on food resources now and after the rut. During the pre-rut and rut, we're going to use some different strategies to try to get a buck in front of us. It can be a little tricky determining which food resources are the most preferred on any given day. If you think about it, most hunters throughout the Whitetails range in the United States hunt in timbered areas. And food resources right now are changing. White oak acorns, for example, are starting to fall in many areas. There were some earlier, but most of those early acorns have been aborted by the tree. They had a little worm in there. There's some reason they fell early. They're just now really maturing, getting that dark color, getting ripe. And once they hit the ground, that's a preferred food resource and deer can change. We noticed here at the Proving Grounds, we were getting bunches of turkeys in our food plots and almost like the flip of a switch, now we're getting two or three at a time, maybe just passing through. And that's because they're in the timber chasing acorns. And when I see that on our Moultrie cameras, I know deer are doing the same. Acorns are low in protein and really high in carbohydrates or energy. And it makes sense because we know deer, most deer are genetically programmed to start putting on weight in the form of fat and a lot of energy to go into the pre-rut, the rut, and winter. Does need to store a lot of fat to make it through the winter. During the winter time, you know, north of Florida, north somewhere, Deer can live on body fat for about 50% of the caloric needs, and that's especially true way north. So once acorns hit the ground, if you're a committed food plot hunter, you may not see a lot of deer. Now, if you're in ag country, you're in Kansas somewhere, and there's not a lot of acorns, and that big burr oak starts dropping a lot of acorns, we call that a feed tree, and deer are gonna pour in there. But there's so many deer going to that one food source they can clean up all the acorns about as fast as they fall off the tree. If you're in big hardwood areas like where I am, you know, think about Tennessee and again up to Smokies, wherever, in the south, there can be thousands of acres of acorns. And how do you find the right tree? Well, that's typically either knowledge, you've scouted that area a lot and you know deer prefer to feed in this area, or you got boots on the ground. You're doing in-season scouting. You're finding fresh sign. And that fresh sign may only be viable for a week or two because that tree is going to drop a bunch of acorns and another tree starts dropping acorns somewhere else and deer shift their feeding pattern. So if you're hunting hardwood timber, being mobile can be a real advantage this time of year. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. You may be walking around with your burst optics, or whatever, and you see a whole bunch of acorns, but know that deer prefer white oak acorns or acorns from the white oak family first. They have 
less acid in them literally they're not as bitter so when they hit the ground they're gonna be sweeter more palatable than acorns from the red oak family now red oaks are really important because they have that higher acid or tannin content and that's a preservative and so those red oak acorns are gonna last all the way through the winter where a white oak acorn hits the ground and maybe a, a warm rain happens on it. You've seen them, they send that little root out the bottom, they sprout, and once they do that, the chemistry's changed and they're not palatable to deer. Deer are gonna go feed somewhere else. So you need to consider that in your scouting. Knowing the species of tree that's producing acorns is just as important as finding a tree that is producing acorns. We're just talking hard mass now, acorns, but there's soft mass, persimmons, pears, other soft mass species that can come on and start producing fruit that's hitting the ground. And as soon as they do, of course, deer have a sweet tooth as well as foxes and coons and other critters, and they can move to that food source quickly. I have found that in general, soft mass trees tend to fall quicker. They shed their fruit in fewer days overall than an oak. So if you find a soft mass tree that's full of fruit, you need to keep an eye on it because when it starts shedding that fruit or falling to the ground, you need to be hunting there because that's not gonna last very long in general. You may be thinking, well, why Grant? Why go through all this energy to plant food plots and worry about drought and all this stuff? Well, early season before those acorns or soft mass started falling, deer are head down on those food plots in most areas, unless it's a big ag area, or once that acorn fall is over, especially if there's not a good acorn crop that year, man, those food plots are critical. In late season here at the Proving Grounds, we've tagged a bunch of bucks in food plots. So you need to know your local area and what food resources are available throughout the season. You need to know, okay, typically deer in an ag field or in my food plot early season, then they're likely moving to acorns unless there's an acorn crop failure. And then they're gonna cycle back to something green after the acorns are gone. It's knowing the food source that's most attractive to deer that day. And as always, being able to approach, hunt, and exit that area without alerting deer. And that can be really difficult when deer are on acorns because they can feed and bed in really close proximity and it's difficult to get in that area without alerting deer. So one last hint, boy, if you find a, you know some big white oak trees that are 50 yards off an interior road or even a public road that doesn't get much traffic and you can slide in there and you're bow hunting or whatever, that's easier to get to than you know going across hill and holler back in there a half a mile you're gonna alert a lot of deer walking through that area in most situations, and deer may avoid that area because of disturbance. So find a food source and then plan a good route so you can approach, hunt, and exit without alerting deer. You know, figuring this all out is a great way to enjoy creation. But even more important than understanding and learning about deer is understanding the Creator's will for our lives. And I encourage you to seek his will daily. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.